All right, so this is how I set up my tent. Uh, in order to make things fit a little better in my bag, I put the tent body and fly in the stuff sack using the smaller uh, cinch strap and then keep my stakes. Sometimes these will go in the bag too. It just depends. Uh, but given that they are more rigid, I like to put them someplace where they're not gonna potentially put a hole in any fabric or anything like that. Um, so they may go up against my my back panel in my bag, just upright or sideways or whatever, just so they're not poking anything. Um, and then tent stakes may go inside or outside the bag. It just depends on what I feel like doing, but they're separate. Um, so where I'm setting up, of course, look for a, a flat place. Um, this is, my yard doesn't have a whole lot of flat. Uh, this is about as flat as it gets. Uh, avoid roots, I've got a root right here. Um, I'm not gonna be sleeping in it right now, so it's not a big deal. Uh, check for rocks, sweet gum balls, those seeds, and uh, uh, sticks, anything that may put a hole or undo wear on your um, tent floor or sleeping pad, if that's an issue for you. So um, once you find an area, uh, pull the tent out. I'm not doing the footprint today. I think it's still in my pack. I'm not worrying about that right now. Um, obviously, footprint goes down first. Um, pull the tent body. I just stuff it. Uh, find out which way you want to orient the head. Uh, for this, I want to show you something specific with the head. So I'm going to put the head sort of like that. So you can kind of see the side a little bit. And, um, and what I do uh, with the head. Now, if it's raining, um, I will typically go ahead and put the poles in and throw the fly over the top and then do all of my work um, with the fly over it. That way I'm avoiding getting rain inside uh, the tent body. <coughs> and knocking water off the trees. Nice. I found that I could never get quite the right tension. Get a nice taut stake out on this head end of the tent uh, here and with the fly as well. And since the fly attaches to the same point with these Jake's feet, um, you can't really adjust the tension of the fly separately at the head end. Uh, so I found that going a little bit wider than a 45 degree stakeout, um, kind of going straight out at first and pulling it nice and tight straight out, tends to get me the right amount of tension across the head and then I can make adjustments to the fly everywhere else. Let's see, somewhere And then I'll put these at about 45 degrees roughly, but I get some good tension across the bottom of that tent. Um, so I don't have a, a real loose uh, bathtub. All right, so with the corner staked in, um, I'll go ahead and put the pole in place. Uh, you know, one tip, if it's raining, go ahead and get all this stuff it doesn't matter if it gets wet, get it out of the bags. Um, that way you're not wasting time. Get all the poles already put together and set up before you get your tent body out. That way you're not wasting time uh, in the rain. Uh, 
Uh, I usually do the head end first. I don't think it really matters, but I just find it easier to flex the one pole at the foot. Done. Clip it up. So you get a really nice head end here. It's nice and tight. Um, have no problems there. Uh, the floor, I can't really see it from the video, but the floor is nice and tight. No wrinkles there. I'm ready to put my fly on now. Which I always, uh, sometimes I get this inside out. Yeah. There we go. Again. Oh, I just put the wrong logo. Go ahead. All right, throw that on. Get your Jake's feet in place. Um, yeah, I was wrong. There's a there's a little bit of adjustment here, but you can't adjust side to side. You can only adjust straight down. And so whatever you get is is what you have with the tension here, uh, side to side. And I just. It's, a, it's kind of a picky thing. I just don't like those wrinkles across the head. Everything is a little bit loose right now, and I will tension everything up. I go ahead and give myself a good bit of line and then stake it out real far. I don't really mind if the um, if it's not coming down to the ground. I want that up off the ground for ventilation. Um, and it gives me a little more room to store gear as well, just a little bit. Um, so I'll go ahead and pull this all the way out. Put that in. And then this side, kind of the same thing. You can't see, that's all right. So then you can kind of draw this down a little bit if you want. There we go. It's a little loose, it's not too bad. Remember, as these wrinkles and stuff, it's been sitting in a stub sack, so as these wrinkles settle down, I didn't tie these, you can, you can always tie these with the poles, you know, aligned if you want, no big deal. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, it all depends on what kind of weather I'm dealing with. Uh, but I forgot this time, but if you are, uh, it should be done when you put the fly on before you get everything attached. And this is also can be done from inside the vestibule, probably a little easier than what I'm doing right now. Just unzip the vestibule and strap those in. Um, but uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, that's good and tight. You got some some wrinkle here, some wrinkle here, but all this stuff will sort of settle out, especially if it's warm. Um, it'll settle out with that fly, and then you can always retension it after maybe an hour. And then uh, inside. Um, I found that, that th these are they can be helpful um, clipping onto your vestibule and your fly. 
this loop here is always super flat and I can never, there we go, get it on. I do feel like this doesn't really do much for you unless you shorten it. So if you shorten it, maybe, but it'll also pull your vesicle in a little as well. Uh, so it doesn't really add a whole lot for me. Uh, but with this method, I get a very good pitch pretty much every time. Uh, no issues with water, rain leaking in. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. Let me get the camera off of this. All right, I'm gonna take you in to the tent so you can kind of see a little more closely. But with a proper stakeout, uh, let's see. So here you can see the gap between the fly and the tent body, pretty much all the way around. Uh, plenty of gap at the head, at the foot end uh, down there, all the way down to the bottom. Plenty of gap there, and a good amount of tension. Looks like there's a little bit loose uh, right here. I don't like that, so we're gonna draw this down a little bit, and then draw this side down a little bit. There we go. See, now that's, now that's nice and tight, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's see, it's a little loose, not too bad, that's nice and tight. And the head end here, there's a little flap here, so, there's a little flap here. Um, it's not too bad, but as this gets wet, it can become heavy and start pressing down against your tent body. Let me see if I can get a shot underneath here. Well, not really. Um, so you may need to make some adjustments down here to get that a little tighter. Um, let's see. Maybe hard to see the angle there. It's a little more than 45 degrees. And I found that that little more than 45 degrees uh, helps get this head, the fly part of this head, um, a little better, a little tighter. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's what I do to set up. Um, pretty straightforward. Not a whole lot to it, just make sure everything is nice and tight. You know, loose tent, especially these uh, these nylon, nylon tents, a loose tent's gonna flap, it's gonna make noise. Uh, it's gonna have a risk of failing on you due to um, wind and a risk of failure due to rain. So uh, it's important to, to practice, make sure it's all set up correctly and uh, especially know what you're doing so you can set it up quickly in uh, inclement weather. So there you go, that's it. The Nemo Hornet 2P 2018 model.